Hey guys, Clyde here live at Leechburg Lights. We're in the studio today and I wanted to do a video on how to connect to your brand new F16 V2 for the very first time. Uh, this process will we'll walk through uh, how to set up your show computer so that it can talk to and you can communicate with your brand new F16 V2 controller. So uh, without any further ado, um, I'm using Windows 8. The process is exactly the same in Windows 10. And not only that, you can follow along in Windows 7 using the Start menu as I go into the Control Panel. And that'll be the first step. We're going to go right in. I'm going to hit the Windows button. I'm going to bring up this screen right here. And we're going to type Control Panel. And as soon as I type it, you can see the name comes up. I'm going to select it. And in Windows 7, this should look very much similar. You're going to go into System, or I'm sorry, Network and Internet. You're going to go into Network and Sharing Center. And then over here on the left hand side, you're going to see this Change Adapter Settings. Um, my computer has a couple different adapters. First, I have a Wi Fi adapter that connects to the Internet. Second, I have a wired Ethernet connection, which is how I physically connect my computer computer out into my display with all of my uh, controllers that are out there and then I have a Bluetooth network connection. I'm not worried about the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi. I'm more worried about Ethernet because that's all we're dealing with here. So I'm going to double click on my Ethernet connection and it's going to bring up the status uh, panel and in we're going to go into the properties of the Ethernet port. When you click on properties we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for Internet Protocol versions TP, TCP IP version 4. I'm going to double click on that and that will bring up our internet properties. Now when you open this up this is what it's going to look like. Typically it's going to look like this unless you're some kind of network guru that does a whole lot more of their computer than I do. Once again this is my show computer. I don't really get online and do a lot of internet stuff with this computer. In fact I try to keep off the internet as much as possible. Um, what I have here is I have my internet uh, or my IP address that I'm going to assign to this computer. And an IP address is nothing more than, uh, a, 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 than an address, just like any address that you would find. So I live in Leechburg, Pennsylvania. The, this would be like, this is, this is uh, the street address. I live on Main Street, so my street number would be here. This is, my, um, this is actually the town I live in. And then this is the, the state that I live in. And then this is my zip code over here. And what happens is all of these first three numbers have to be the exact same. You have to live in the same town in order to talk to anybody, but you have. But this last number is what changes in your IP address. Um, so maybe that's a bad acronym, but I, I, it's kind of just how I thought of it real quick to tell you. So with the IP address, I'm going to assign a static IP address to this computer. And to do that, I'm going to use the typical standard IP address that is going to be preloaded on the Falcon. And that is 192.168.1. And then I'm going to click over here and I'm going to assign my computer number three. Nothing else in my entire display has this final number as three in it. And if you do, there that will cause an IP conflict and you'll notice it if you have two computers with the same IP address. Um, so coming from here, from the left to right, the 192.168.1 network. This is one network. This tells it, hey, this is the network we're on. Everything else needs to be set up identical to this. It has to have the first three sets of numbers the exact same. Once again, I'm not a network guru or an internet expert or a networking expert. I know that this will work for me in my standard or in my settings. Um, so from this screen, I'm going to just go ahead and push the tab button. And as soon as I do, you can see the subnet mask fills into 255.255.255.0. That we're just going to leave as default. Now we're going to come down here instead of saying obtain DNS server automatically, we're just going to copy our IP address from above and use it as our preferred DNS server. And that is 192.168.1 and dot three. And we're going to leave that the same exact number as there. Once this is complete, this is the last thing that you do in order to get your computer set up to talk to your F16 V2. I'm going to go ahead and close out all of these. I'm just going to leave this open. And then I'm going to come down here to Internet Explorer. <clears throat> 
and I am going to go into my browser. Now, if you have a brand new F16 V2, you haven't connected it yet, now's a good time. I'm going to bring a picture in here because I don't have a video to show you to do this. You're going to connect your controller with power on the right side of the board and this will power all of the in internal electronics that will run the board and allow your uh, your status indicator lights to light up right here. Here's where they would show up. So somewhere right here there's one there's two LEDs that will light up as soon as you apply power to the board and your your positive goes on the right here your neutral goes on the left make sure whenever you're setting your F16 V2 up this setup here I think I have pin number two and three uh, with the jumper on it that is for five volt I'm pretty sure pin one and two three and four are connected to get your uh, 12 volt and I believe the instructions are located right here on the board to tell you which pins need connected when you're connecting five volt or 12 volt to the board so you don't blow anything out uh, so once you have power connected to this via a power supply which is not shown in the picture you're going to connect a standard Ethernet or patch cable or straight through cable a standard um, uh, networking wire into the uh, RJ45 network jack here on the F16 expansion board here not the expansion board but the uh, but the uh, uh, raised board here once you've done that connection there you're going to go back to your computer and you're going to connect into the back of your computer into your Ethernet port once that connection is made now you can go in and you can type this the um, the IP address for your F16 V2 which should come in at 192.168.1.50 now my F16 V2 is in the display at the moment it is not at 5.0 I have another controller that's set up to uh, receive uh, data in at the uh, IP address of 5.0 I'm gonna change it to .70 and as soon as I do I have immediate connection with my F16 V2 um, if you've missed any one of these steps that I have just laid out by going into the network and sharing center going into change adapter settings you will not make connection at all you have to be on the same IP configuration if we go into the network configuration page this is one of the biggest things whenever you are connecting to your F16 V2 that you need to make sure you are on the 192.168.1 network if your computer is not configured to this let's say your computer is configured to 10.10.10 .10 if your computer is not configured in the Ethernet port to go into properties and under TCP IP version 4 if it's not 10.10.10 .10, you're not gonna if it is 10.10.10 whatever then the F16 V2 will never come up because it is set up with a static IP to start with in the 192.168.1 configuration so you need to make this change before you can connect to your F16 V2 now let's say you decide you don't need the 192.168 you want it to be 10.10.10 whatever uh, .50 you can make that change now you can change this to 10.10.10 whatever Um, that is your choice you're welcome to change your IP address to whatever you need it to be um, but I, I typically like I said I leave it at 192.168.1.70 for this specific location so guys I think that's pretty much it uh, if you have any questions or if you have any comments please feel free to leave them below as always you can get in touch with me through my website at www.leechburglights.com you can go to the Facebook page get in touch with me there through facebook.com forward slash Leechburg Lights and also through my gmail account at leechburglights at gmail.com guys thanks a lot take care and I hope this video was helpful for you